Blessed is the name of the Lord our God, who redeems us from sin and death. For us and for our salvation, Christ became obedient unto death, even death on the cross. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now let us pray. Merciful God, you gave your Son to suffer the shame of the cross. Save us from hardness of heart, that seeing him who died for us, we may repent, confess our sin, and receive your overflowing love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now let us sing together, Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Let us sing together. Tremble, tremble, tremble. 
Friends in Christ, Christ shows us his love by becoming a humble servant. So now let us draw near to God and confess our sin in the truth of God's Spirit. Let us pray together. Most merciful God, we, your church, confess that often our spirit has not been that of Christ, where we have failed to love one another as he loves us where we have pledged loyalty to him with our lips and then betrayed, deserted, or denied him. Forgive us as we pray, and by your Spirit make us faithful in every time of trial. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. Jesus Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. Therefore, I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Bible reading for Good Friday service is from the Gospel according to Mark. Chapter 15, verses 16 through 32. Now let us hear the word of the Lord. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace, that is the praetorium. They called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail the King of the Jews. Again and again they struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own cloth on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Kolkotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him. Dividing up his cloth, they cast lots to see what each would get. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at them, at him, shaking their heads and saying, So you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insult on him. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now let us pray as we listen for the living word of the Lord. O oh God, because we are not able to please you unless you live in us and we live in you, mercifully grant that the Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Last night Jesus was betrayed, arrested, tortured, and this morning, he was led by the company of Roman soldiers into the palace called Praetorium in a public place and he was about to be tortured and mocked. 
and those soldiers who brought Jesus into this place, they mocked him by saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his forehead. They also put a purple robe on him. They were indeed making fun of the King of the Jews, our Lord and Savior, because they did not know who he was, because they did not know what he was about to fulfill. Fulfill the call, fulfill the forgiveness, and then fulfill the salvation of God. And today's reading says, Because they didn't know, so they again, again struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him over and over again. After taking their own time, then they led him out to crucify him. So Jesus wasn't able to carry a cross all by himself. So they stopped a foreigner whose name was Cyrene, uh, Simon from Cyrene. And he forced him to carry Jesus' cross all the way to Kolkata. The cross on Calvary. And once they arrived, they offered wine mixed with myrrh, sour wine, but Jesus didn't take it. Comparing with the other Bible readings from Matthew or Luke or John, today's reading from Mark is very condensed because the Gospel of Mark wanted to point out just one incident happened on Good Friday. It was People didn't know who Jesus was. Even the chief priest and the teachers of the law, they also mocked him among the, all the people because they didn't even know who he was. So they were the ones who said, he saved others, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. So Gospel according to Mark wanted to give us a message. Well, actually give us a question whether we believe in this dying Jesus or not. Jesus took up our pain and bore our suffering. He was pierced for our sins. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. That's a reading from prophet Isaiah 53. The Mark's Gospel is giving us, asking us whether we believe in this, in this dying Jesus or not. He dies so that we may live. On this Good Friday, we must realize how painful and lonely Jesus was to walk on the path of Golgotha. Even though he told his followers that God would save sinners because of his faith and obedience even to death on a cross. But when he carried the cross onto Calvary, where he was nailed on the cross, he was all alone by himself. His death wasn't carried out in a secret place, but in a public place where his death could be seen even in a distance. Many people were there, Roman soldiers, local authorities, chief priests and teachers of the law. Even people from outside of the town were there. When people mocked at him, they said, he saved others, but he can't save himself. But no one stopped them. 
No one stood up to defend Jesus and said, He is the Savior who carries your sins away today. By the time Jesus was nailed on the cross, his follower should have realized what Jesus told them was about to happen. So they were supposed to shout out, Look, the Lamb of God, bleeding and dying Lamb of God for the forgiveness of our sin. Look, here is our Redeemer, our Savior, who is going to save us all today. They were supposed to say that to the crowd. But no one spoke nothing about redemption and salvation. Redemption and salvation through the one who were nailed on the cross right before their eyes. Jesus was all alone by himself. But he faithfully obeyed to God and humbly forgave people while he was dying on the cross. On this Good Friday, we must remember his obedience to God, even to death on the cross, for the forgiveness of our sin. And we must remain in his undying love for us, so that we may join in his glory and life on Easter morning. So today, let us give our thanks to God for the forgiveness through his passion and death. And let us wait and expect for the risen Lord on Easter morning so that we may glorify and join in His glory. Amen. Now let us sing the rest of the hymn, Were You There When They Crucified My Lord?
Now let us pray. Holy God, we remember Pilate's question, what is the truth? Now we have seen the truth, Jesus Christ, your word made flesh, betrayed, denied, mocked, and beaten, put to death on the cross, buried in the tomb. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on us. We have seen the truth. Now show us the truth of forgiveness through your saving power. Show us the way beyond the grave. Show us the life that is everlasting through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us sing together our closing hymn, Nearer My God to Thee. Jesus said, If any of you want to be my disciples, take up the cross and follow me. Those who seek to save their lives will lose them, but those who give their lives for Christ's sake will be saved. And as we make that kind of commitment and pledge and dedication, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Redeemer, the love of God, the Creator, and the fellowship with the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen.